Well, the quote for today is from a mom who writes, being quarantined with a talkative child is like having an insane parrot super glued to your shoulder. Today is October 20th, a great feast day of St. Paul of the Cross. And I'm sure many of you grew up going to parish missions. Remember when churches would have parish missions during maybe Lent or Advent, and they would bring in Redemptorists or they'd bring in Passionists. And the Passionist priests were the ones with the long black robes, with the, the white sacred heart of Jesus surmounted by the cross and the saying, the passion of Jesus within the heart. And they would always hold a crucifix. Well, the Passionists were founded by today's saint, St. Paul of the Cross, a saint that I hope you get to know. He was born in 1694, lived to be 81, died in 1775. And he is a great Italian mystic and founder of the Passionist Order, known as the Congregation of the Passion. He was born in Northern Italy in 1694. He was the second of 16 children, so his mom should be canonized as well, right? Even though only six of the children survived into adulthood, his father was a merchant, I believe in the tobacco business, and, uh, but he had some financial problems. Um, Paul had to go to boarding school, then he had to leave because he didn't have enough money for the, to help, he had to leave to help raise money for his family. But his life was sort of changed when he went to, a, heard a sermon when he was 15 years old about the passion of Christ and the sufferings of Jesus and how much Jesus loved him how much Jesus suffered for him and for the whole world. So he began to spend more time in prayer and penance. For example, he would sleep on the floor instead of in his bed, or he would eat foods that he didn't like, and he would offer this up as a sacrifice, uniting his sacrifices to the suffering and passion and death of Christ. At the age of 20, he joined the army, the Venetian army, to help defend Christendom from the Muslim Turks that were invading from Northern Africa into Europe. And he did this for a year, but then he realized God was calling him to really be a, a spiritual warfare and to spend more time in prayer and penance. So he went back and, and just lived a life of prayer and penance and then felt God calling him to establish a religious order, a community. So of course he entered the seminary, was ordained a priest, and he felt God calling him to establish an order to promote parish missions and renewals and going around the country. So he wore a, a very you know, long black robe, made a very a coarse material, and he walked barefoot and would begin to preach. Eventually his order was approved by the Pope and other men joined him and they would spend uh, years giving parish missions and preaching in the streets and on, in town squares holding processions and prayer vigils and giving sermons. He was known to be a very powerful preacher, he, but in the confessional, he was always gentle, compassionate, and understanding. The expression, he was a lion in the confessional, a lion in the pulpit and a lamb in the confessional. That's what he was to sinners. So he had a great gift of reconciling sinners back to the church, bringing back fallen away Catholics and hardened sinners, bringing them back to the church because he preached the passion of Christ and how much God loves us and to meditate upon the passion. He had a great desire to try to reconcile England to the faith. England had broken off under Henry VIII. He once wrote, England is always before my eyes and if it ever becomes Catholic again, what a benefit that would be to the entire church. What he didn't know was that 65 years later, a passionist priest who is now blessed, Dominic Barberi, would go to England and would help bring John Henry Newman, Cardinal Newman, into the Catholic Church and really bring about the Oxford movement of so many Anglicans entering and coming back into the Holy Mother Church. So he did help to bring about a renewal of Catholicism in that country. So he died in 1775 at the age of 81 and is um, the Passionists are now in you know, 59 countries, continuing throughout the world to give parish missions and retreats. And I would just end by encouraging you to meditate upon the passion of Christ. 
Uh, the, the Passionists took four vows, poverty, chastity, obedience, and a special love for the passion of Christ. And his name was very appropriately chosen because Paul of the Cross, his patron saint was St. Paul the Apostle who said, I preach Christ crucified. So I encourage you to meditate every day upon the passion of Christ, whether it be saying the five sorrowful mysteries of the rosary, meditating upon his agony in the garden, the scourging, the crowning with thorns, the carrying across the crucifixion, or to do the stations of the cross at least once a week on Fridays, make the stations of the cross, or read about the passion, not only in the gospels, but for example, Bishop Sheen's book, The Life of Christ, has a great deal about the passion. Read the writings of the great mystics, Mary of Agreda and Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich. That's one of my all-time favorite books is The Dolorous Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ by Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich. So I'll give you a blessing now with the relic of St. Paul of the Cross. He's buried in Rome. I had the privilege once of walking down the street in Rome and walked into a church and there was the body of St. Paul of the Cross. That's where he's buried. This reliquary is unique because it also has St. Gemma Galgani, who was a passionist, Maria Goretti, who had a passionist spiritual director and the passionist gave her the sacraments. So she's considered part of the passionist spirituality and St. Gabriel of the Sorrowful Virgin, all these wonderful passionist saints. And don't forget what St. Thomas Aquinas said, you can learn more about God's love for you by gazing on a crucifix than you could from reading countless books. So meditate upon the crucifix, think about the passion of Christ because it shows just how much God loves us. It's the passion that converts souls and brings them back to the church when they realize how much Jesus suffered for each one of them. So through the intercession of St. Paul of the Cross, may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.